Hi everyone, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and I hope that you're doing well. The library tour is continuing this week, and we are navigating to nonfiction. And I really enjoy reading nonfiction. I had a whole decade in my life, roughly 1995 to 2006, where I was pretty much exclusively reading either nonfiction or science fiction. Uh, so it's something I've spent a lot of time enjoying. And I have shelves of history books, science books, books on mathematics. I know everybody's really excited for that video. Uh, religious studies. This video is going to focus on a series of books of essays that I really, really enjoy, a couple of science books that are just glorious, and then some biographies. So let's jump in, and we'll kick off with what has been one of my favorite nonfiction reads in 2021, The Infinity of List from Umberto Eco. And this is the third in a sequence of sort of illustrated books he did, and they're fantastic. Um, this is th this one had got me to just dive in and want to explore the others, uh, but I want to talk about Infinity of Bliss because I'm rereading it, and I love this book. I can't recommend it highly enough. What Echo does is he he takes a concept, and this one it's the concept of infinity, the human concept of infinity, and he explores different ways in which humans have um, really examined that idea or tried to represent that idea, and he looks at it from two forms. One is literary in writing, and the other is artistic, so whether primarily painting, but sometimes photography, other ways in which humans explore that idea. And so each chapter begins with an essay, one to seven pages, and he makes connections to other, you know, chapters within the book, but it begins with that essay, and then it has a sequence of um, passages from across millennia. Homer's represented in here, so are works from the 1980s, 1990s even, I believe. So he's, he's examining these and he's collecting them and trying to draw these connections and drawing connections as well to works of art. And so those pictures are represented as well. And so we end up with pages like this where we'll see a painting, but there's also passages around it. And the essay with, with a work of art leading just directly into a painting and then the subsequent pages of whatever work of literature he's referring to uh, and it's excellent it's about 400 pages and it has so many wonderful ideas the concept of infinity to me is fascinating for a number of reasons uh, but the way in which he explores and makes a connection between infinity and lists as a representation of suggesting infinity is really interesting and just a phenomenal book it was recommended by um, Jason Harrigan who's on Instagram is the uh, Aesthetic Aesthetic, or Aesthetic Aesthetic, I can't remember which. But there are two other volumes. The first was um, History of Beauty, which precedes um, Infinity of Bliss by about 10 years, I want to say. And I haven't read this one yet. I've explored it a little bit, but I'm looking forward to reading this one in 2022. Um, and again, it has passages, it has literary passages, works of art, trying to show the different ways that humans think of beauty. And then the great... <laughs> the middle book on ugliness, um, which it represents the same ideas around how do humans think of ugliness. Uh, but this book is very special because it was um, it's a beautiful book, but it was damaged when John, uh, who's on Instagram as Mupplewick, uh, when he uh, he had a shelf collapse, and so ironically the on ugliness book was damaged. And I've periodically put up pictures of stuff I repaired. So he kindly sent this uh, to my daughters and I, who actually repaired the book. And so uh, this will be one that I'm really, really excited to read as well. I love Infinity Bliss, so those other two are, are right up my alley. Um, we will now jump into a couple of biographies. So Christopher Marlowe, Poet and Spy from Park Honan. This is a really good biography of Marlowe. Uh, it's also an interesting critical examination of Marlowe's uh, various plays and some of his poems. And it's a fascinating window into just little aspects of life in 16th century um, Canterbury and London. And that I think is Honan's, one of Honan's skills is that Honan is not just trying to give a more florid Wikipedia entry or encyclopedia entry on, you know, someone's life or on some dates and works and such, but he really tries to get into details. What would the relationships have been like, you know, among the youths at the school Marlowe was going to from from different primary documents what would we know about that what would it be like you know to be an actor or a playwright what do we know about that 
from other documents that, you know, other primary sources that can be compiled to sort of try and create a much more lived in panoramic view. And that's something uh, Honan excels at. I would be interested in probably reading any of Park Honan's biographies simply because of that, that way in which he wants to get into the world in order to understand the person, not just here's everything we know about the person. Uh, so I thought it was really effective, really, really effective. And if you at all enjoy Christopher Marlowe's plays, you might find that this biography is right up your alley. I, I thought it excelled. Uh, another one, Jonathan Swift, His Life and His World from Leo Damrosch. This is a more recent one. This was actually a gift to me from my wife. Uh, I want to say it was in 2015. No, might have been, might have been 2014. Uh, but this is a really, again, a really, really good biography, and it's his life and his world. Damrosh is doing something very similar, where he's collecting some primary sources. He's really trying to give us a sense of Swift's life, um, not just Swift in his writing and <laughs> going to Ireland, and uh, you know, the, the being a, a minister, uh, being a writer, Stella. Not just those pieces, but really getting into that world. What is that world like? And I think, again, Damrush really succeeded. I enjoy Swift's writing immensely, and so this book was sort of right up my alley. Uh, Diderot, a critical biography from P.N. Furbank. I haven't read this one yet. I've read sections from it enough to know that I was willing, I, I wanted to like spend some time reading it and um, found a copy for like 350 or something <laughs> online. Um, but Diderot is an interesting uh, member of the Enlightenment in, in my reading. I find that uh, many of his early writings are, are writings that I, I find very sympathetic. Um, even though he and I will disagree wildly <laughs> on certain ideas, the, the tone and the temper with which he writes is very different from that of, say, Voltaire. Uh, and so I thought this would be sort of interesting to explore um, and then perhaps pass on to someone who also is curious about Diderot. A recent acquisition, uh, Radical Wordsworth from Jonathan Bate. This is a fairly recent biography. And uh, I found this for a song, essentially, and thought, why not? Because I'd heard a lot of good things about it. And I'm not a fan of William Wordsworth's poetry. I'm not, I don't find it interesting, uh, which perhaps makes me a weird Philistine among the high romantics of all apologies. Um, I love the high romantic period of, of poetry. Um, the Portable Romantic Reader is one of my favorite little Viking portables, but I don't find Wordsworth particularly interesting. And I've tried, I've tried reading different poems, the prelude, uh, you know, critical, a critical essay on why Wordsworth is valuable and trying. Uh, so this is gonna be sort of a last gasp. Like I, I'm interested in seeing sort of this window into that period and into Wordsworth and seeing if that creates and, and generates a, a deeper appreciation for his poetry. Uh, because so many people enjoy it, so I would be happy to be among those people. Uh, it just hasn't it hasn't struck yet. And then my favorite of the romantic poets uh, would be Percy Shelley, even though, again, Shelley, not somebody I would probably agree with on plenty of things. And uh, his relationships with, with, his, with his wives and with women in general leaves, I think, something to be desired uh, on his end. But Shelley, The Pursuit from Richard Holmes, it's enormous. This is just an enormous bio, uh, biography, 700 pages. And the text is, is dense. It's not, it's not small text. Uh, but I'm really excited to read this book. I didn't learn about it until last year, 2020. And then I, I found a copy and I thought, this is fantastic. I just haven't had the time to get into it. Um, but Richard Holmes has done some great work uh, um, translating as well as writing uh, biographies. And I believe he has a pair on Coleridge, which if I enjoy this, I'll definitely want to explore those. So I'm looking forward to Shelley the Pursuit. Uh, two others, and these are anthologies from a long time ago, long, long time ago, uh, from Burton Rasco. The first is Titans of Literature, and the other is Prometheans Ancient and Modern. And I read this uh, over like a 20 hour period my freshman year of college it was in the dorm library we had a library in our dorm which was kind of odd um and i there weren't too many books that were interesting but this one i kind of just snagged while various friends were studying for finals and uh, mine had finished and i just started reading it and it introduced me to 
some writers I I never heard of it at 19 or 18. So Petronius, Lucian, Apuleius, Aretino, uh, and then it has Nietzsche, Nietzsche, uh, D. H. Lawrence, Theodore Dreiser, and James Branch Cable. But uh, Petronius, Lucian, Apuleius, and Aretino, I had never heard of any of those. And suddenly I was like, whoa, these works sound interesting. Tell me more about this Satyricon. Tell me more about the dialogues of Lucian. I want to read The Golden Ass and all, you know, all of these. And since then I have. And they are fantastic. Uh, but I also read, uh, from that I then found Titans of Literature, which goes into, uh, begins with Homer, and then uh, proceeds through about 20 different writers from across, uh, uh, across European history. That's yeah, is what it is. Um, it's not world literature, but he goes into specific ideas around those writers, quick biographies, and tries to give you know connections to what what was advancing, what did they do to advance you know our conceptions of literature, and so uh, some of these were, were particularly interesting. Doesn't not a fan of Sophocles, tears into Sophocles pretty quickly, but it, it it was a book I enjoyed. There's a hilarious chapter on Milton. He despises John Milton, and that that chapter is stand up comedy as uh, you know criticism. Now, I did mention there'd be a little bit of science in here. So we have Annals of the Former World from John McPhee, which I've heard a huge amount about. Um, I'm getting into Basin and Range. I did read uh, um, his book on oranges. I found that and I thought, okay, let me try oranges to get a sense of his writing. And then I'll dive into his, um, his massive study of sort of geology. Uh, so I'm excited to explore this. I'm going to begin with Basin and Range and... That's an area I've hiked in. It's an area I'm, I'm familiar with. I've driven through it. I'm familiar with it. So I'm excited to sort of read that one and then from there get into the subsequent volumes in Suspect Terrain, Rising from the Plains. Um, and what he does is he essentially takes uh, roughly along a single um, lateral across the uh, continental United States and along um, that there's sort of a, an interstate highway that runs along portions of it. And so just examining the geology along that, you know, cut. And so Basin and Range is going to begin in uh, Nevada and Utah and will expand from there. So I'm looking forward to this. And then finally, I have the, and found at a used bookstore, a great price. I have the deluxe set of Stephen Hawking's Illustrated Brief History of Time in the Universe in a Nutshell. And these are really, really fun books. Um, great, great books, you know, with Brief History of Time is justifiably very famous, uh, but the illustrations are amazing within this volume. They're much stronger. They, they definitely add something to the book. And I, I, you know, I'm, I have taught some of these concepts, not, not all of them, but some of these I've taught, and so I'm very familiar with them. But even with that, it's different when you have great illustrations to go with ideas that feel very abstract, even though that many of them are um, experiences that we have some conception of, uh, an inflationary model. This would be one where we don't really have a conception of it, so different inflationary models would be great. Uh, and that's cool because there was actually just a recent uh, discovery um, from some measurements at the South Pole suggesting that some of our thoughts around uh, early, the early inflation and the cosmic uh, microwave background radiation, one of the theories might not be complete uh, and needs to be revisited. So we've got a wormhole in this one. So these are great. Uh, brief History of Time and then The Universe in a Nutshell, which kind of acts as, I don't want to say a sequel, but certainly goes in and uh, expands on certain ideas um, around relativity, time, um, and sort of pushing out ideas around where Hawking thinks our studies will go and take us and what, what we will be discovering as we move forward. So two thoroughly enjoyable books and really many of these are enjoyable for me. I have, I have copies of these because I enjoy going back to them or I know that I'm going to enjoy going back to them uh, with the exception of a couple of those biographies. So I hope everybody's doing well. Have a great week. Thanks.